My parents were gone for the weekend. Finally, some time alone. Maybe I could take the opportunity to stay up all night and catch up on my creepy pastas. Yeah, that sounds perfect. As the streets became dark and all became silent, I logged into my YouTube account, intending to spend hours on end watching the videos that will keep me awake and wandering in bed. But sadly, that isn't even close to what ended up happening. It was late. I loaded up my, the first video that I found, which just so happened to be the Lavender Town Syndrome. I loved it. It was both puzzling and mysterious, and I couldn't keep from searching out more about it. As the night ages, I fell deeper and deeper into the story of the song that could give children headaches. That's when all hell broke loose. A knock at the door. Who could possibly be knocking at my door at? I checked the time. Midnight. On the dot. Startled, I opened the door to find two police officers. What could they possibly want? Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour of the night, but I have horrible news for you. Both your parents have passed away in a car accident, says the officer on the right. I broke down into tears. The officer was still speaking to me, probably trying to comfort me, but I couldn't hear anything more than mumbling. My parents were dead. Midnight. I haven't left the house since the incident. I didn't eat until forced to, and I would let the days pass by as I did nothing but weep for their death. After a few days of being in this horrid state, I found something. The only memory, the only shred left of their existence. A photo. My father holding my mother in his arms, with me holding onto his leg, as if they're going to leave me. I couldn't have been any more right. In the back of my head, I could hear it. The song. The dreaded song. Lavender Town. It was a song that had been playing at the time of their death. I scavenged through the drawers until I found a, a box of matches. I took one last look at the picture that could bring tears to my eyes with a single glance and burned it. Burned it to ashes and made sure that I would never have to see this photo again. No more memories. They're all too much for me to handle. The song grew louder and louder in the back of my head. I couldn't rid of it until suddenly it just stopped. After several weeks of mourning over my loss, I snapped back into reality. I realized that being saddened doesn't help. I needed to keep myself occupied, get my mind off of things. I could think of only one thing, Lavender Town. It was the first thing that came to mind. It often played in the back of my head and then faded, only to reappear minutes later. I could think of nothing else but this. In my closet, I had stored away an old Super Nintendo. I hadn't played it for years, but now seemed as good a time as any. I brought out my cartridge, pushed it down into the old dusty console, and flicked the power switch. I started creating my song, the one that would be playing on an infinite loop in my head at almost all times. I could recreate the song by memory. When I finished, I did not have to play the song to know it was exactly what was playing in the back of my head, for what now seemed to be forever. Now was the time. I was going to listen to the song. The song that caused me trouble for months now. The song that had been roaming in the back of my head since the death of my parents. The clock hit midnight, and I started the song. I froze. I began to stare blankly at my television screen. This was the first time I had listened to Lavender Town since the incident, other than in my head. I was now two minutes in, and strange things started to happen. The notes moved and spelled out the words, We love you. I didn't add this. The notes on the screen started to move again. They moved for several minutes until finally coming to an end. The notes now became a very precise and detailed picture. A picture I recognized. A picture of... Of my family. The picture I burned over a month ago. My parents, both smiling down at me, while I buried my face in my father's knee, holding as tight as my arms could. I awoke. In a room. A room with soft, pillow-like walls. I looked down at myself. I was dressed in a coat. The ones used to tie people down. I had gone mad. Those months I spent in my room, alone, were they real? Had it actually happened? Or maybe it was all my imagination, devoted to recreating a normal lifestyle. What about the Mario paint? Had my parents sent me their final goodbyes? Either way, I was here, in a mental institution. I was driven mad by the death of the two people I cared about most. The Lavender Town song has been playing ever since I woke that night. It had never left my brain a moment to rest. This is where I will live the rest of my life.